Wondering what catching Omicron would do to your long COVID and how it might affect your long COVID symptoms? I was wondering too, so I collected data on it to try and find out. Stick around and I'll go through the results of my study of long haulers who got reinfected to see just what the consequences were. Let's get straight into it. I surveyed 176 long haulers who'd been reinfected with Omicron, drawn from social media platforms including Facebook, Twitter and Slack, to see what the outcomes were a few weeks or months down the road. Uh, who were this group? Well, firstly, predominantly female as we've seen in other studies on long COVID. 70% were female and 30% male. As we've seen in previous studies, mostly in early to middle age. The 35 to 44 and 45 to 54 slices of the pie here being the biggest. The cohort were international in nature with the largest group being from the UK, then the US, mainland Europe, Canada and Scandinavia. Most of them, that's 87%, had been vaccinated, with the majority either having been double or triple jabbed. Standard study disclaimers here, there may be a degree of selection bias due to the platforms used for recruitment, affecting age and socio-demographic factors relating to the cohorts, but for the purposes of what we're looking at, I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference to the results. So when did these long haulers catch Omicron? Across late December and January, as we'd expect, 91.5% of them were still suffering from long COVID, with 8.5% of them having recovered from long COVID prior to Omicron infection. As we've seen in prior studies, most of these long haulers were infected in the first wave, with only 15% of them still in their first year of long COVID, 85% of them uh, having been suffering for more than a year. How bad was their Omicron infection? 15% of them were either asymptomatic or found it milder than a common cold. A quarter of them had it about as bad as a cold. And then the largest group here, about half, said it was worse than a common cold with several additional symptoms. 12% of the sample were extremely unwell. Personally, I caught Omicron in early February. I'm not quite sure how because I wear FFP3 masks everywhere, but my experience tallies with the majority here. I was out of action for a week, a couple of days fully in bed, and only able to work in fits and starts around those bad days. My symptoms were definitely worse than a cold, the difference from my original COVID infection being the swapping of GI malarkey for respiratory symptoms and a wannabe chest infection. How long did most of our samples infection last? Well, symptoms were split almost 50-50 between people who experienced them for less than a week in the red and yellow here, and more than a week in the green and purple. They tested positive for longer than they had symptoms, a third of them testing negative within a week, but two thirds taking longer than a week, with the largest group here taking 10 plus days to test negative. Again, personally, my symptoms lasted about a week with a negative test on day eight. So again, I'm in the middle of the sample here. How far out from their Omicron infection are this group? Well, 59% were less than a month and 41% over a month at the time of data collection. And let's look at those two groups in terms of how they're doing now, or at least at the time they filled in the survey. Those who are less than a month out from the end of their infection aren't doing too great. Only 14% doing better than they were before Omicron, 19% about the same, and 66% either doing slightly or much worse, here in the red and blue segments. There is this intriguing turquoise group though, those who seem to have recovered completely after their Omicron infection, 3% of the group. We'll be coming back to them a little later. How about those who are more than a month out from Omicron? Well, things have improved somewhat. Those who are much worse have dropped almost 50%, which is the smaller blue slice here. The slightly worse group is more or less the same, as is the group who are still at their pre-Omicron baseline. We've got a slightly large number of people doing better though, 18.5% doing either slightly better or much better. And our complete recovery group are still in there at 3%. Overall, if you compare the green and purple slices to the blue and red ones, you can see that Omicron isn't doing our group any favours. Lots more people doing slightly or much worse than they were before, rather than slightly or much better. And the back to baseline group in yellow is still relatively small. So let's look at what symptoms tended to get worse for those who'd taken a downward turn. Number one is our old friend fatigue. Then muscular aches and weakness coming in at a surprising number two, closely followed by PEM, neurological symptoms, brain fog, respiratory symptoms and headaches. Bringing up the rear but still really pretty numerous were cardiovascular issues, dysautonomia and POTS and GI issues. Basically it looks like Omicron can make just about everything worse. 
Again, I've not tended to talk too much about my personal experiences, but after I did on my skiing film, everybody seems to be interested, so I'll <laughs> I'll say how I'm doing. And for me, I'm almost back to my long COVID baseline now, sort of three weeks after recovery, in terms of energy at least, but my post-exertional malaise is worse, and my energy envelope is a bit smaller, and I've got chest pain I never used to have, and extra palpitations for good measure that kick in at about a heart rate of 95, 100, instead of 120 plus when uh, I used to get them. So again, I'm probably in the middle of this data really. But how about those who'd actually improved? Well, the top three improving symptoms were fatigue, brain fog, and GI symptoms, although this group overall was much smaller. Let's dig in a little deeper on some of these results. Did the people who'd made a full recovery from long COVID get affected differently by Omicron? There's only 15 of these guys, but let's take a look anyway. Well, first note, here's three of our complete recoveries we spotted in the previous charts. These people, simply continued in their non-long COVID state after recovering from Omicron. Importantly, these weren't people who somehow got cured by Omicron. And of the remaining 11 who answered, eight seem to have got long COVID symptoms back again, with only three not doing so. So if you've recovered from long COVID, this suggests you've got about a 50 to 60% chance of getting long COVID again if you catch Omicron, subject to a degree of error relating to obviously this very small sample. How about if we compare our triple jabbed cohort with those who haven't been vaccinated at all? Well, there's slightly more of the boosted lot feeling better than the unvaxxed, but it's not wildly significant and the sample size of the unvaxxed cohort is still relatively small. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that vaccination isn't of benefit because it's been widely shown to prevent from serious disease. But what this data might show is that it doesn't have a massive effect on whether catching Omicron makes your long COVID symptoms better or worse. And given that vaccination doesn't prevent long COVID in those who catch it the first time, perhaps this isn't so surprising. Now, the groups involved in this study are nowhere near the size of the large vaccine studies, but let's take a look anyway, comparing how severe the acute infection was for the unvaxxed versus those who were double or triple jabbed. In red here, we've got the unvaxxed, in light blue, double jabbed, and dark blue, triple jabbed. It seems that being double jabbed doesn't make much odds to your acute infection, most likely because that protection has waned and isn't able to do much against a variant with this many escape mutations, which kind of backs up what the official line was when it was time to get boosted. And how about that boosted group? Well, notice that there's a significant number of them who didn't get symptoms at all, and the proportion of those who didn't get symptoms or found Omicron milder than a cold was 17.6% versus 13% in the unvaxxed. More importantly though, is the number who were seriously unwell. That number being half in the boosted group than it was in the unvaxxed group. Again, some caution needs to be taken here as the unvaxxed group was pretty small and it only takes one result here or there to throw out the percentages a large degree. It is interesting nonetheless though. So overall, what are we to make of this? If you're a long hauler and you haven't caught Omicron yet, then I would say it's Fair to say, you really don't want to. Keep wearing a mask, and a good one, um, and keep managing your exposure risk if possible, because if you catch Omicron, there's a very good chance it'll make your long COVID symptoms worse. Maybe not back to square one, but it's certainly a big snake on the snakes and ladders board. What the longer term impact is, we don't know yet. That's an unknown that you really don't want to roll the dice on either, if it can possibly be helped. So that's enough from me today. Stay safe. Until next time.